Hi everyone, thanks for the invitation from Computational Track and the conference organizer to invite me have a chance to present my work on a software which we call Magic DNA. The output of the software is a list of staple sequence, like I show in here. With that, if you mix them together and put into a, in a leading ramp, they will self-assemble into a specific shape. In this case, they are going to form the title of my talk, Design of Freeform DNA Origami. This is the last day of the conference. I believe everybody already know how what's DNA origami. But I just want to say DNA origami can really make a lot of different shape. During the past 40 years, the field has made tremendous progress in making this DNA nano device. Not only more and more groups get involved into the field, but also the complexity of the structure, no matter steady or dynamic, has increased a lot in, te in terms of geometry, the scale, and the, func and the functionality. I think nobody can remember the sequence of M13 scaffold, so all origami design need the help from computer software. Since the early time of DNA origami, people use bottom-up design tools like CanNano and Tiamat to design structure with their graphical user interface. Here I show you another example of K-Router, which creates a triangular mesh to allow users to specify scaffold routing on a planar grid with an easy-to-use interface. To speed up the process, recently, top-down approach proposed to use commercial CAD software to define the overall geometry. Then, the routing algorithm can take this geometry as input, complete the rest of the work, and export a stable sequence list to do the experiments. Now, think about what's the option if you need to design a new structure. Basically, two options. The first one is to choose a bottom up UI tool like CAD Nano, and uh, the second option is to select a CAD software like FreeCAD. Due to their original intention, their output are different. For CAD Nano, obviously, the output is the staple sequence list. On the other side, the output of CAD software is geometry file for the following simulation or manufacturing purpose. For CAD Nano and other GUI tool, because they were designed and optimized for DNA, thus the interface looks easier, and it allows user to have full control on the det detail and make a lot of different shape. In addition, those icons and operations are related to DNA, hence we can easily understand what does that mean because of our background and analogy. For general purpose CAD, they were created for engineering tasks, especially good in three-dimensional model. They are very powerful and have lots of function there. People can use it to do sketching, wireframe, or solid modeling. Here I want to point out two high-level operations in CAD, extrude and sweep where users first define the profile and extrude along the vertical direction or along another arbitrary freeform curve called sweep. Simulation tools are also important for evaluating a design. Finite element, cost square model, atomistic simulation have their own advantage and disadvantage. Here we choose to use cost square simulation, mostly focus on the ArcSDN model to provide feedback to our design software. Alternatively, this recent multi-resolution model, MRDNA, is also another option. Earlier over the day, Professor Kim from Korea demonstrated a new FE software, Snoopy, which is not only fast but also provides near atomistic resolution using multi-scale approach. This is really exciting because simulation feedback are important for any design software. I mentioned these four types of software, that's because during developing Magic DNA, I always keep in mind that how to integrate those nice features into a robust and versatile framework. This is the design framework we propose in Magic DNA. In the top, it is mainly for the design portion, where geometry and assembly mimic the process of using general purpose CAD software. Then, the routing part. By combining benefits of top-down and bottom-up software, we have automatic algorithms and can fine-tune the routing if needed. Less and most importantly, cold screen simulation provides the feedback to make it close, close loop and robust. Using this framework, we will be able to design lots of different shapes as I shown in the right. However, if you look at the model more carefully, you will notice each component is a straight DNA bundle in Magic DNA. This could make design of freeform structure quite challenging. However, lots of the research needs freeform curve feature in geometry for some reason. For example, our keynote speaker, Professor Lin, mentioned in membrane engineering, this helical spring can be used to study membrane binding and the tubulation behavior. In micron scale, disography and the addictive manufacturing, curve feature can reduce the stress concentration. 
In millimeter scale, these kind of stretchable electronics have better compliance, so when you wear them, they can adapt your motion and not to break. Let's take a look how people decurve structure in DNA nanotechnology. These two papers have demonstrated how to design curve feature. 10 years ago, the basic idea is to introduce different DNA duplex lengths in the inner and outer layers. DNA is soft, so they will adapt stress and then bend into a certain direction. For matched DNA, we could use edge gradient on multi-component to achieve similar effect. But I would like to explain how to assemble multiple components with routing algorithm. First, think about a simple case with only two components with two cylinders and how to assemble two cycles into one. You need to find out where to make connection in 3D space and break it, then ligate twice to merge into one cycle. This is a simple example, but think about what if you need to do in 30 cycles or more. This may become tedious and hard to scale up. Hence, we propose to use this connectivity metric, which basically tells the routing algorithm how many connections I want between bundle I and bundle J. Look at this dual platform. You can see that the top triangle is formed by bundle 1, 2, 3, and there are connections between them. Same for bundle 4, 5, 6 as the button triangle, and the other bundle are just between the top and bottom. The connection can only be made on side node and end nodes. With connectivity metric, we can search the connection based on distance. This becomes the input for routing algorithm and create 18 cycles. Then we use spanning tree to guide the integration of this 18 cycle into one scaffold. We also extend the routing algorithm to multi scaffold. First approach will allow user to specify more input to control the adjacency of cycles and have multiple tree. Second approach, we get a very long scaffold cycle and find two crossover to break into three cycle. In this approach, we are more interested in the scaffold length after breaking. We use the second approach to design, simulate, and fabricate this airplane structure. This design has made by a uh, four orthogonal scaffold and roughly 30,000 base pairs. A quick summary here, we use connectivity metric and 3D model to make assemble automatic. Routing algorithms support many components and different cross-sections. Last, multi-scaffold multi for, for larger design without being limited by M13. However, to use them, bundle needs to be put in rough position and orientation because the connectivity metric is based on distance. Also, when two bundles form a vertex, users need to manually key in the edge gradient to approximate the shape. This is an example with only three bundles. If we don't specify correct orientation and edge gradient, the result of the routing doesn't make sense. Then, if we manually adjust the orientation but without edge gradient, the inner layer and outer layer have the same length. The oxygen simulation show the structure is under certain stress. If we fix both, then the result looks much better. However, let's count how many inputs we need to specify. In this case, with only three bundles, it has 15 menu input in total. Also, this is a planar case, so there is no gradient value along the x direction. Here we define the edge gradient, which is the difference in duplex length between neighboring layer along x or y direction. And, then, and we also need to consider two sides of a bundle. Again, always thinking about how to scale up. For this helical structure, if we want to approximate the shape with 11 bundles, the input variable will be too many. In addition, for three-dimensional freeform curve, the bending vector has two components along x and y direction. Hence, we should have to use automatic algorithm instead of using GUI to handle this tedious job. We propose two new methods to solve it. Before that, we create a new GUI, which allows you to sketch freeform curve. We choose to use spline because this is one of the easiest freeform curve in mathematics. This GUI has two outputs. One is the green dots called break or control points. The other is the spline curve. By specifying the cross section, here we have our first approach, extrude in series. The goal is to automate the calculation of the bundle orientation and edge gradient. With the connectivity metric, we can obtain the scaffold routing with L algorithm. The other approach, the sweep method, is just like the sweep operation in CAD software. The cross section is like a profile and we sweep it along a freeform curve to obtain our assembly model then connectivity metric and scaffold routing. For the first approach, the extrude in series method, 
we need to find out two parts, bundle orientation and edge gradient. For orientation, we use the orientation of the first bundle as input to calculate the second one, the third one, all the way to the last one along this straight line model. The second, second part is the edge gradient. Let's think about bending in one direction only. Based on the geometry of DNA, we can derive an analytical equation between the edge gradient and bending angle alpha here. However, the spacing between cylinder is somehow between 2 and 2.5 nanometer. Let's leave it there. We will come back later. Now, think about orientation with edge gradient together. We also allow user to rotate the orientation of the first bundle. In this way, the bending will have two directions along x and y. Hence, we have a rotational metric before the pure bending case to calculate two vector components for bending. To determine the effective spacing, we use ArcsDNA, we create 10 design with two arms, and specify different gradient value from 2, 3, 4, all the way to 27, and observe the bending angle alpha. This is the cross-section of this simulation, 12 hit this bundle. In addition, we also have three more cross-sections for these 10 cases. The result with an analytical model is here. As we expected, larger core section means we can control the angle more precisely. So the error bar is smaller, and as you can see, we found out the effective spacing around the vertex is about 3.2 nanometer. That's because of the routing algorithm. There is no crossover around the vertex. We know it is common to see the fraying at the end of bundle in ArcsDNA. Hence, the effective spacing around the vertex is 3.2 nanometer, larger than the typical value 2.5 nanometer in the middle of the arms. You can also see that in this visualization. Also, in the bottom left, with only two layers, we cannot control the angle very nicely, especially in large bending angle. In this case, adding another bundle as chart could be helpful. Now for the sweep method. First, the input of this method is prime, position on the curve. We all know this is a continuous curve. This is important because that means we can take derivative. If we take derivative once, we can get the tangent vector. We only need, need a uni vector, let's call it ek. If we take another time of derivative, we can get a normal vector and its uni vector ei. Then use the cross product to get ej. For a given cross section, the spline will pass through its center. Then the, then the position of each cylinder can be calculated by a linear combination of ei and ej. CMI and CMJ are constants for every cylinder. By doing that, we can offset the spline into this three-dimensional object. Next, the user needs to decide where to discretize this object, as I shown in here in magenta. Then, we can calculate the cylinder length for the cross-section and for every bundle. They can be used to further construct our assembly model. Now, I want to show the interface of the software. First, this is the sketch GUI. We can change the representation. Initially, orientation and, and the edge gradient are not good. Just by click this button, it is good now. Now, assign core section. Here, we use 6 his bundle. Then, we can get our assembly model. And here, we also assign 3 extra connections. Use the scaffold algorithm to get the routing. This is the side view of the scaffold routing. Here, you can see 3 more extra connections. That's because we need them to hold the shape. Now, let's go back to line model. Rotate the, the, the orientation of the first bundle. Click on the button again. The program will calculate everything again. But this time, we use 10 Hedis bundle. Then, uh, assembly model, scaffold routing. Now, let's use the sweep method. Initially, it has more nodes. Here, we can delete one, or we can delete more, and also adjust the this cyan dot. Before exporting, you can see the length of each cylinder of each bundle. Again, assembly model, scaffold routing. This time, let's finish the design, so staple routing. Assign scaffold sequence to, to obtain staple sequence. Prepare ArcSTN simulation file. Uh, this is our final design of this g clef structure. After running ArcSTN simulation, we ordered the staple, mixed them to fold, purified the structure, and took AFM and TM image. I should also mention all the experiments in this talk were done by Wolfgang. And this is our second case. 
is a spring and made by 29 bundles using 6 his bundle. And here is our third case, we call it Chrome. And in the sketch GUI, we specify 5 prime and assign 3 different cross sections here. In this case, we want some sharp feature, so we choose to use extrude. And you also can see we use K-Nano to offset the crossover. And this is our three-dimensional design, 3D Hilbert curve. So because we need better control on the angle, so we need to use larger core section, 12 hits bundle. And this is the three-dimensional case. So button right is our preliminary result on cryo -EN data. And here is another one, Trifolian curve. And for the conference, uh, we use this, uh, this framework to design this F-Nano script. It has five letters there, so we need two scaffold to build out the design. And uh, in this design, uh, we, 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 have, we chose two different cross sections. I have explained how to automatically create assembly model using extrude and sweep method. I also explained how to complete a design with the connectivity metric and routing algorithm. Now, the only thing is not automatic is the first step, the sketch GUI. Luckily, in this GUI, we only need to deal with XYZ coordinate. This GUI not only can visualize them, but, but also can insert more move or delete nodes. Also with some advanced stuff like alignment or mirroring. With this feature, this function, we can sketch two-dimensional curve and three-dimensional curve and make the entire Magic DNA design framework into one software package, at least for the design part. So we use that to design this, this uh, number series, also lowercase letters, uppercase letter, and Greek alphabets. Because the input of the sketch UI is just XYZ coordinate, it is easy to design this uh, parametric curve. You can calculate the XYZ coordinates on the parametric curve and feed to the sketch GUI, then complete the rest of design process. And chase, and also can put like this way. Also, as I said, people like helical shape. This meta DNA concept is very cool. So I want to use Magic DNA to design and simulate some helical shape. First, we sketch 13 primes using XYZ input. Then, when converting to bundle, we assign two different cross sections on the backbone bundles. One with six is bundle, the other with twelve. One can see the three dimension. You can see the three dimension of helical geometry in the simulation. This is the meta DNA duplex. It is not hard to imagine. We can extend that to build higher order shape. For example, like this meta hyaluronic junction, meta hairpin, and meta three way junction. Also, Professor Choi from Purdue mentioned this Osecti meta material concept earlier. This software is very suitable for this task since user have more control on link and joint stiffness. So I mimic two of their structure architecture and run ArcSteam simulation as I shown in here. In addition, another commonly used architecture is called reentrance as shown here. I also use this new free phone feature to design its unit. We can also use this framework to do something beyond science. For example, like ours, or we can use it to deliver some concept to other people. During the coronavirus pandemic, although I don't know how to kill the virus, I still can make some image to persuade people to wear masks. Now the vaccines are distributed, so I make this one to persuade more people to get it. And hopefully we can end this pandemic earlier. In addition, by the time we can reunite with our family and friend, one can also use this to design some holiday cards. Think about it. We can send this DNA origami Christmas card to our friends and kids and start to explain what's DNA origami. By doing that, we may be able to attract their interest and hope they will join this wonderful community in the future. Last, the software is online available. I updated the version with this new free phone feature. We are also preparing a new tutorial movie for the new GUI, so please subscribe our channel on YouTube. To let more people use Magic DNA, we plan to host some virtual tutorial to guide the interface. If you are interested, please send me an email. Now, I would like to say thank you to all the people supporting me during developing this software. This project is funded by NSF DMIF DEMREF grant. 
I show you lots of ArcDNS simulation which were conducted in NSFXC project and Duke computing cluster. Thank you for your attention and I will be happy to answer any question.